What's up everybody? Travis here from Travis.media. In this video, I want to share with you what I think are the top two programming languages or frameworks to learn in 2020. And I'll even include a runner up. Hey everyone, if you're new to the channel, my name is Travis. I'm a self-taught software developer of four years. On this channel and in my blog, I've documented my journey and I'm sharing everything I can along the way uh, with coding tutorials, uh, freelancing tips, and all things web development. So if that interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and hit the bell if you wanna be alerted when new videos are released. So before I get started, as always, I have a caveat, and it's this. This video is not gonna be based on studies and surveys and charts, okay? This is gonna be merely opinion and what I see going on in the market. And speaking of surveys, I just don't know what to believe. I feel like, I feel like sometimes people are taking a survey and erasing a language and like kind of swapping it out because I, I feel like I've seen the same survey with different results the same year, you know. And so I don't really know what to believe. I mean, you can get a general consensus from these surveys. You can kind of see what languages are doing better than others. But I, I just, I don't know exactly what they're based on. There's so many of them. There's so many factors that I, I just don't know. I can see like the most popular language for 2019 was this. And then somebody else say, the most popular language for 2020 was this. And this one was down, way down. And, and I don't know. So anyway, I'm just gonna say this video is based on opinion and based on my experience and the way I see things going. And since a lot of this is opinion, I wanna know your opinion. What do you think the top languages for 2020 are to learn? Now watch the video first, and then at the end of it, leave me a comment because I am open. What do you think? I wanna know. So before I discuss these two, let me talk about a couple of other languages that a lot of people think are the best to learn in 2020 and why I think they're not. Number one, Python. There is a huge hype about Python. And I love Python. I got big into it at one time too. But here's the thing. Python is great for data science. I mean, it's taking off. You're into data science, you got to know Python or R. I think Python is a good route to go with that. Or if you're in DevOps, you're doing scripting and things like that. Python is good to know. Python is powerful. Again, I love Python. For web development, you have some good options. You have Django, you have Flask for like microservices. But here's the thing. I just don't see it popular in web development. I mean, I, I know Django is solid and I know um, Flask is solid, but I just, like if I look at job listings, like Python is very, Python is just not listed very much. And if it is, they're looking for somebody super experienced that also knows some kind of front end framework. Python's been around a while and I just don't see all the hype in web development. So that did not make my list. Number two, Java. So Java is like number one on a bunch of surveys. All these articles are talking about how Java is alive and well, and it's a wonderful language to learn. However, I feel like all new apps and new startups, things like that, I feel like they're not even using Java. So if you start learning Java, you're gonna get a job working in legacy code. Lots of apps are still using Java, and Java is still alive, but I feel like you're just gonna be put in legacy code with it. So I don't recommend learning Java either if you don't know it. Next, Golang. I love Golang, and if I had the time, I would love to learn Golang because I do some DevOps work now. I see the power of Golang. I mean, really a great choice, but I don't see the, the widespread community adoption. I mean, it's been out for a while now, and it's, it's kind of picked up. I mean, there, there are certain vicinities that it's, that it's bigger in, but I don't see the widespread community adoption of it. I mean, with Go, you can do web apps, you can do desktop apps, you can do all kind of stuff on the file system, and it just hasn't taken off. I mean, it's very versatile, it's very fast, but it just hasn't been widely adopted. So if you're looking to play the long game, maybe like the next five years, Golang might be a good option, but I'm not gonna include it in my list. Next, Node.js. I love Node.js, and it almost made the list. The only thing is I see something like Golang doing everything Node.js can do. So I don't know what the future is with Node.js. Right now, I love it, and it's very useful, very versatile, but it just doesn't make the list either. And finally, PHP. So basically, nowadays, PHP is WordPress. If you wanna learn PHP, make sure you learn WordPress, and probably WordPress more than PHP. So PHP is still alive with WordPress, but there's not a lot of vanilla 
PHP apps being built. So if you learn PHP and you're not working in WordPress, you're going to be also in legacy code. So if you're going the WordPress route, make sure you know PHP. Otherwise, uh, Laravel actually is probably keeping PHP alive outside of WordPress. And I'm a big fan of Laravel. I think it's beautiful. But without that, it's just not a, it's just not a language I would encourage you to learn outside of being a WordPress developer. And there's a lot more I could comment on, but I want to go ahead and get to what I think are the top two languages slash frameworks to learn in 2020 with a runner up. So number one, and this is not in any, any particular order. This doesn't mean this is the top. But number one, the first one is C Sharp. Now, real quick, C Sharp is mature. C Sharp has a widespread usage. I mean, you got desktop apps. You can do mobile apps. You got and since a lot of this is opinion, I want to know your opinion. What do you think the top languages for 2020 are to learn? Now, watch the video first, and then at the end of it, leave me a comment because I am open. What do you think? I want to know. Web apps, you got gaming. There's lots you can do with C Sharp. It's object oriented, it's fairly easy to learn, it's way better than Java. And I think it's a language, if you don't know it, that you should learn this year. It's also strongly typed, and you work with things you don't work with in a lot of other languages like file streams and threading. It also helps you become better at object oriented programming because it's very heavy in that. So just learning that alone gives you an edge up on a lot of the easier languages and looks good to employers. So why do I think that? It's not based on any surveys. You know, I think it was like fifth or sixth, seventh on, a, on the surveys. So all of that is great, but here's the main reason I think C Sharp is a great language to learn this year. And it's largely because Microsoft is taking off. I don't know if you saw this contract they won a month or two ago over Amazon, but that is a huge, huge win for them. Their stock is rising. LinkedIn is booming. I mean, there was an article the other day about how great LinkedIn is doing, how many jobs it's putting out for people. And things like GitHub, they're just doing overall really, really well. And their language, of course, is C Sharp. So I think you're going to see more C Sharp. I also see that C Sharp is like keeping up with the latest trends, too. They're not like this old language that just works. They're keeping up with stuff and they're adding new features. And it's just overall, it's a wonderful thing. I actually learned C Sharp last year and I've been using it pretty regularly at work and I absolutely love it and see the power of it. So that's number one, C Sharp, mainly because I think Microsoft has a bright future and they carry with them C Sharp and of course, .NET Core. And speaking of .NET Core, all the scaffolding and things you can do with it, how quick you can get a project up is just baffling. It's wonderful. All right, number two, this is no surprise to anyone, but it's React. And I'm saying React not because I'm jumping on the bandwagon, but mainly for this reason. Uh, React took off a couple of years ago and everybody's like, oh, this is just the new thing. You know, JavaScript jumps around to all this stuff. React will fizzle out as well. That might be true. Let's say that is true. Let's say like Vue 3.0 comes out and React fizzles away. Here's the thing, though. The past couple of years, so many companies have adopted React that even if it fizzled away, there would be lots of jobs needing React developers to maintain their code. I don't see it fizzling away, but in general, it's become so popular so quick that if you look at the job boards, there's just jobs galore for React developers. I love Vue, I love Angular, but React is the language to learn in 2020 if you haven't. Now, I know a lot of people have learned React, uh, but if you haven't, I would get to know it and start working with it. So those are my top two languages, C Sharp and React for 2020. Now, I said I had a runner up. This runner-up almost made the top two because I'm really intrigued with it, and that is Flutter. Dart slash Flutter. Why? Because if, okay, so Flutter started out as a mobile framework, and it's cross-platform. So it works on Android, it works on iPhone. No two separate code bases, just one code base. Like, that's cool. But then all of a sudden, you can build desktop apps with it for both platforms, the Mac and the PC. And now I'm reading, I think it's actually in beta, that they have an interface now for web apps. So if you have a framework where you can build mobile apps for both platforms, desktop apps for both platforms, and web apps, all one code base, okay, you don't have an Android and an iOS code base, but if you can build for both platforms in one code base, that's gonna be huge because you can really nail down that framework and be super versatile. 
And if you look it up, it's being adopted pretty fast by the community. It's really doing well. Their YouTube channel is great. There's new widgets being created all of the time. And I just see a bright future for it. So if you're looking also to learn something like that, something that adapts to a lot of situations, consider learning Flutter. And that's it. And like I said, this, these are my opinions and what I see in the market. So I know some of you are going to disagree. And that's great. Disagreement is good. But if you do, leave it down in the comments because I want to know what you think are the top languages for 2020. Could you do that? All right. So as always, again, consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a bunch of videos lined up for 2020. Really looking forward to this year. And I hope you have a wonderful day.